have found that in my time as a clinician, I've been able to identify uh, some of the needs for the research that I'm doing a little bit more clearly than I did, say, even a year or two ago before I really started uh, uh, working in the research lab. And that's kind of exciting because it's really nice to see, um, to, to look at the patients you're treating um, and no longer ask the question of, well, how can I make you feel better or what can I do to make you live longer or whatever, uh, based on the armamentarium of, of tools that I currently have. But where in my tool belt is, is, is something missing and, and where could I actually put a new tool that could make you feel better um, or make you live longer. Patients who have heart disease, um, uh, we have drugs that do help, uh, that have actually made incredible advances in, um, uh, uh, in, in their lives. Uh, about 50 years ago when patients had heart attacks, we would treat them by putting them in the hospital, by um, just putting them on bed rest. Um, patients didn't do so well with that sort of therapy. Um, uh, but now we have all sorts of therapeutic tools uh, and medicines that we give them that really prolong their lifespan. And one of the most effective ones has been medicines that have lowered cholesterol levels uh, because that targets the actual um, beginning of the pathophysiologic process that ends up causing heart attacks and, and strokes and, and other sort of similar, um, similar problems. Um, nonetheless, d d despite the fact that, that patients are treated with these medicines, um, the disease process still continues. Um, and as patients get older uh, and um, uh, as, the people, as, as people age, we just see more and more patients that become resistant to the medications we give them. My hope is that we could find some other therapy that would then uh, you know, treat these patients who are aging and still have this problem.